Okay. So before starting or continuing with the, our interviewing topic, uh, I'd like to give you some uh, practical information about what happens in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so that uh, for concerning the labs and concerning the um, the milestones and uh, and the group. Okay, just to be clear on the on the different steps uh, of this process. Okay. Uh, so first of all, the first point is that uh, uh, tomorrow we have the first lab. Okay, it's uh, as we anticipated. We are trying not to split uh, the two, uh, the course in two groups. Uh, so we'll only use the, the first hour. So tomorrow, lab one uh, at ten o'clock. You know that after that, uh, the the lab is booked for the course. So if you need to stay in Ladispe, uh, sorry, in Labinf, uh, after the, the first hour to maybe work on a project or whatever, uh, it's booked for us, for you, and so you can stay there, okay? But the, the, the lab time is only uh, everybody together and uh, in one hour, one, one and a half hours. The number of people enrolled is now 75, if I checked probably yesterday. Uh, it's a bit of the, the limit of the lab, but let's, let's see what happens tomorrow, okay? but uh, for the moment uh, uh, all together um, the, um, the i just give you a preview of the text of the lab we, you probably saw, uh, see in the message by luigi where is that yeah for the text of what or what you will be doing tomorrow i just give me a flash so that you can start thinking about it it's, a, it's something very simple open and creative the idea is uh, think about or find or propose two interfaces that for you are good so, so they could be in the hall of fame of good uh, or well uh, usable uh, interfaces well usable interfaces and two uh, from the hall of shame so something that is really uh, impossible to use or difficult for you so from your experience what we ask you is just to identify two good ones two bad ones uh, this sh can be done individually we don't care about the groups yet uh, we, we, uh, and um, and so that you can try to reflect on maybe what you find personally good easy to use nice and what you find bad and difficult okay and reason start asking yourself why and why the reason that this is particularly good or this is particularly bad hmm? so something that you can try not to be too, too repetitive probably so don't don't uh, overwhelm us with the portal didactic or something like that but uh, uh, it of course is one of the examples but be specific on not the website in general but a specific page okay what is the specific pages two specific pages that you pages or screenshots they are for mobile they're for desktop they're for web any anything any interface that you're using that you're happy with and a couple of examples and a couple of examples on interfaces that you are not happy with okay you will we will ask you to submit them into a google page uh, for uploading the screenshot you need to register with your with, to with your google account uh, but uh, really we don't care about your identity no, wh the reason why uh, we are asking to submit them is that later on we will see the say the, the rules the heuristics for a uh, job evaluation so that we can start discussing the examples that you submitted say, okay this was example and now we have the tools for analyzing them beyond the intuition beyond your uh, you know in first impressions okay so this for tomorrow you will uh, we you will do that during the the hour but uh, if you start uh, thinking about examples to submit uh, you can uh, maybe come up with uh, more clever ideas okay um so the the idea is a uh, whole of fame two examples hall of shame <coughs> two examples then tomorrow also we have the deadline for the groups uh, i was just 
like to check with you <coughs> just to uh, the <coughs> sorry the form that we ask you to submit uh, so project title and description project project title okay just a title for we will use that for creating the github uh, projects okay so uh, we, with this project title and uh, this is one line description of your project idea you see tentative here tentative there because of course we will refine the idea during the next weeks mm -hmm. um, so your project idea and then we ask you to let me put something there just to go forward uh, information about the members this the, is the easy part and finally oh sorry <coughs> sorry uh, this is wrong okay so the I'm sorry I, I, I did check it from the front end uh, the idea was uh, to have a, a text area to describe the project description <coughs> But basically, try to focus on these uh, questions here. And uh, from the discussion I had with some of you, uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up now is that uh, to give you a, w a warning. It's very difficult uh, to think about the users without thinking about the features. And difficult for us. Okay, so you you all are already starting to think about uh, what should the system do it's not the right question at the right time <coughs> the question is uh, what are the users that they want to help and what are the contexts in which they want to help them what is the context what is the goal that's it we don't need to say we don't we must not say how we are going to help them that is the part of the need finding phase Okay, so the kind of reasoning that they see in some of you is, uh, okay, I can create a website that implements these three functionalities. Okay, let's find out some users in which this functionality could be useful, which is a technology-first approach. I know to do this, then find somebody for which this is useful. It's not explicit like that, but I'm trying to emphasize. This is a technology-first approach. Let's try to do a user-first approach. These are the users. These are the actions of the users that you want to help them with, to improve. And for the moment, we stop there. Then, once we have identified the users and the context, we will start with the need finding, the, the observation, the interview, so that we can later decide which features users want, not which features I can implement okay so it's not a problem if you don't uh, give any detail or many details or you don't give any details at all about the features it's, it's normal it's required okay <coughs> we we don't ask uh, what the website is doing we are asking questions here you see about the users not about the the, uh, the, way the site the tool hmm? which devices the user we use with context the user is in is immersed in where is it where and when and with whom so these are questions about the users that will be the starting point for the need finding of which needs uh, detailed needs the user really want of course we already select a population and a context so people in sports for example so which for which sport we select i don't know biking okay that that's a context but then what do they need in that specific that specific uh, set of users in that specific context uh, we don't know yet you can presume you know but you really you don't until you speak with them okay so try not to submit uh, the function of the website try not to, to describe your project try to describe your users it's difficult because we never think like this okay we came up thinking about okay this is a technology and uh, what can i do with that this half of the difficulty I say of this approach is uh, in changing the point of view okay 
uh, about the timing okay so let's uh, remember talk about users not projects uh, what happens next okay so actually the submission for the groups and the project ideas is uh, tomorrow will be the 10th of October we will revise them and try to approve uh, or give feedback uh, uh, on this uh, on your uh, ideas on your uh, projects uh, uh, by uh, next Tuesday I took a note in order to avoid computing the days on my fingers it's not a negative October it's just October um, so next uh, Tuesday before the next class okay so don't try to follow us around the corridors or during the night uh, is my project okay okay w when we see in class I know that it will be uh, um, attacked if we don't tell you uh, something before the class so we, we set that, that deadline for us okay for approving the project and for pro those projects that we are in in parallel we are going to create the repositories so by that date you know okay we can go forward we have the repository we are enabled uh, you have all the github uh, uh, your ac account enabled to work on a project that will be a, pri a private project so you can work uh, inside that um if there is a we don't we don't know yet uh, whether all the all the project will be perfect and successful or we need some discussion with maybe one or two groups or with half of the groups uh, we don't know so uh, once we evaluate uh, uh, so, uh, what the, the 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 number okay of, of projects that can go bad uh, we decide whether to talk with them one by one maybe a side of the lecture or to dedicate some time for more uh, open discussion about the groups that have problem or if there are some general problems we don't know okay so for a moment we we only know that the, the beginning of the, or the, or the next week uh, of the next next week uh, we could start uh, trying to finalize uh, the, the project proposals okay <coughs> and then hopefully you can go forward with your project so pro, uh, project so what are the next steps after after that okay the next step is uh, working towards milestone one hmm? we define the deadline for at uh, the 29th of october so it's nearly two full weeks uh, after the project definition well after the approval of the project definition until uh, the milestone one and the milestone one will consist of uh, uh, the need need the, the need finding of your project so by the date you have to submit uh, some observation of the groups uh, you have to perform some interviews and uh, prepare a report with the functionality with the needs with report the needs of the users so at that point we want to see the functionality of the website functionality that will come from the users and not from your mind okay um, to help you with this process the next lab lab 2 will be about uh, interview design so try to work with you in the lab uh, and we can assist you during the that work uh, uh, in trying to find out to, to prepare the interview and so you have time and this will be lab two was in, in the, uh, the 17th of October um, so after the project is approved uh, you can start designing your interfaces and then you have the 10 days to find uh, some people but the idea is just uh, three people okay or something like that so uh, uh, well, let's, let's do that all the process but with a small scale so then don't like, get crazy about finding a lot of thousands of people of course if your project has different groups of stakeholders you will have to contact more people because uh, you need to hear from different uh, points of view hmm? if your project has a more well-defined uh, set of stakeholders that are all the same time of, of, the, of the same kind of course you need to involve less people for that okay so this is the more or less how we use the time until um, 
the end of October. Sorry, it's not 29, it's 23. Because the 29 is when we give you the feedback. Hmm. So let's say that by 29. Okay, so uh, 29 is again is the next Tuesday after the deadline and uh, uh, the feedback will be on GitHub, usually. okay, in general, directly we comment on what you, what you submit there, okay? So that's the next step. So all we, the stuff we are discussing in these weeks uh, is something that you need to work on in the following next uh, couple of weeks. And then we go forward like that. And next week we'll start uh, the discussion about prototyping and wireframing and so on, and that will be the subject of uh, milestone two. Okay. Um, any questions about that? Okay. A, a wrong question. Is everything clear? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we are talking about uh, designing the interviewing with the user. So let's go back to the real content. Um, with the small numbers that we discussed before, of course, uh, in your project, you will do one-to-one -one interviews uh, with three different people, not focus groups, uh, uh, so that you can get, bet uh, you can get a better <laughs> understanding of the differences also. <coughs> we already commented on this yesterday so tr don't be too direct with the questions and uh, prepare for the interviews by f by finding uh, all the representative users uh, from different uh, categories of we call them stakeholders here okay so we discussed this yesterday uh, well uh, yesterday we 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 left uh, when we uh, before they started to discuss the content of the interview okay so uh, for the execution of the interview, first of all, you must find a context in which you have time, enough time, okay, uh, for you and for your users, so that there's no hurry, you're not, uh, you're not trying to pick somebody in the streets uh, uh, and uh, please reply me to three questions or whatever. Uh, these are sort of an instant polling that is not useful for understanding the needs okay it's more useful for pushing an opinion your opinion to them okay uh, so something that can be convenient you can talk uh, uh, without uh, interruptions or without too much noise and explain the purpose of the interview okay um, we already said this said it uh, the interview will or should give space to the persons to the users to the potential users to your ideal target users to express themselves so you are conducting the interview you are making questions just to make them easier to describe what they need or the situation or their actions and so on. it's always people like love to talk about themselves people can tell a lot about what they are doing so to tell what they do when they do it with whom they do it they don't tell you so much about the why or if they start talking about the why probably it's not the real why okay they're convinced they're doing that for a higher reason that maybe just for saving time or whatever hmm. but actually the, the the goal of the questions is uh, uh, just to prompt them for discussion so there will be some people that you need to stop <laughs> okay okay i understood enough about this so let's move to the next topic that they need to hear and uh, some people need a constant uh, you know uh, prompting uh, in in order to to go forward okay and so next uh, and can you tell me more so it's up to you to handle uh, this conversation so it's not a script uh, that you have to follow in a rigid manner hmm? uh, especially if you are a uh, conduct that the, uh, you can you could go to an interview uh, on from cold start so with the person that you never know before and okay so you follow the script uh, which is more or less equal to everybody but in a in a case uh, when you can combine the observation and the interview 
probably the interview could start and should start from the findings of the observation so i observed you now let's start by discussing about what you did i observed this uh, activity i sh i saw you that uh, you are doing this and so on hmm? so it's also easy to start uh, the more concrete are the questions the more significant and reliable are the answers okay never ask uh, in general what you do but now what did you do okay and uh, okay <coughs> it, we have the temptation of making a lot of structured questions okay let's just tick the boxes one two three yes no i like it i don't like it so it will be very easy very fast very quick to execute the interview get give me just four answers and very easy for me to process we have numbers we have ticks the count them no? um, but they, they give less information they are can be useful if we have a very specific uh, mm, question in our mind and we want to dig into that uh, but for f um, for emerging new needs uh, or new kinds of needs uh, they are not uh, a good way so it's better to go with unstructured questions open questions discussion there may be some maybe also evaluation so i don't know okay you, i saw or you mentioned three different uh, activities which ones would, would you prefer or which way which one is more important so you are asking for a ranking so this is a very structured question you one two three put them in order but on top of a wider discussion where they had uh, the possibility to express themselves and if you are asking quantitative questions we'll talk a bit about likert scales uh, later so uh well you know uh, rates the how useful is this for you in a scale from one to five one is totally useless and five is uh, um, really uh, needed or indispensable and they will say four or three but you never know what four means in their mind uh, when i have a ranking one to five uh, well for me i seldom give five five is, is excellent so four is already a good mark if i had to respond somebody else uh, for somebody else five is good four is not so good okay i have uh, you know there are these memes around that uh, people uh, well, when they call I, I, I don't know if we ever saw that picture where they compare uh, uk people and us people okay so for us people everything is fantastic is gorgeous is uh, is great even if they think it's really nothing at all so but they will always be very positive in your uh, uh, in your judgment in the judgment towards you okay people from uh, from uk is uh, are the, are the reverse right? okay it's a bit but and so um how do we know what kind of scale these people have in mind we just ask okay if i have one thousand people i need i can make an average you can see okay well is this person consistently replying four as the top value so maybe i try to risk i could rescale statistically uh, the answers but with a small number we just clarify okay but, okay, but four what does it mean for for you what's missing to the five what is not what is not perfect in you oh no but you know it's really perfect it's really good I, there's nothing missing oh so it could be even five uh, you are not trying to argue about the answer you are trying to understand the meaning of the answer not just the number we don't care about numbers hmm? um and so try also always as, as we said to get uh, <coughs> a detailed answer how often do you use this functionality it doesn't work when, when is the last time you use this functionality it's a direct question give me tell me one thing one information don't try to think about the frequency or how, how often or so i ask you one question i give you that then we elaborate on that okay you, you used it yesterday and the day before ah uh, not the day before i couldn't why and so on hmm? just to engage in the in the discussion 
and uh, before okay not in your case but if i had to do to deploy an interview with you know 10 or 15 persons it's better if i try it with two three people friends or whatever just to debug the interview okay that maybe we are asking the same information twice uh, and so it's, but it gets boring on the part of the other uh, person and so try it. let's always try it hmm? like like always so there are, these are examples of good questions to to start the conversation okay the tell me about your typical day is a, a very broad okay maybe you can, can put it into the context so first uh, i made an example of people doing sports uh, with bicycles okay but it's not just while you are on the bicycle it's the before it's the after the preparation is there's the booking uh, there's the mm, agreeing with the friends to go preparing dressing scheduling timing and then going to the bike and then having some rest uh, and then going back home and then sharing the pictures it's a whole experience you maybe are focusing on one instant of a process but people just don't do that for that instant do that for the whole experience they feel the whole experience so let's start with the whole experience they tell us and then the, in the different steps uh, we try to understand okay but what's good or what's bad in that step for you how could we make it better okay <coughs> and always finish with an open question saying okay what else do you want to say is there anything that we could have asked but that we didn't think of hmm? so like like the Mazzullo style, uh, make a question and give an answer to yourself, okay? Um, bad questions, always try to avoid. Is a given feature important to you? The answer will always be yes. If you are giving something more for free, I will always take it. Maybe I will never use it, but if you ask me if I want it, I will say yes. Okay, so mm, avoid this question. What would you like in the tool, in the, in the website, in the application? What function would you like? Uh, uh, a cold question like that, uh, it's too difficult for a user. So they will never be able, they're, they're not expert in designing functionalities. They're expert in, the, in, the, in their domain. So they can tell you what they do what they want to do not what they want uh, the application to do okay let's not exchange the role of the designer and the user this is a more difficult to understand why it's bad what do you like in a given feature what do you like in my i don't know timeline this is assuming that they actually like it so in some sense you are saying that okay you must like it and tell me why so you are preventing them for telling you that something is wrong that you they actually don't like or they don't like some part of it you are preventing them for ever talking about uh, parts, uh, some parts or some functionality they don't like because you are just saying you like it what and what do you like in it but you are, you are saying that they like it they are, they are not saying it okay so never put an assumption hidden inside the question <coughs> so i ask you about yourself what would you do in a given situation what would you do if you had uh, i don't know an, a screen uh, bolted to your bicycle and the screen would give you this information who knows so again people are good at talking about themselves about their experience what they already tried are not good about uh, imagining something different they never tried especially if it's not similar to anything else they they already know hmm? so the answers that you will get uh, are, are meaningless you can ask a person what would you do in this situation they give a reply in good faith okay they're trying to imagine 
and then when they when you put them in that situation they will behave differently they don't like it oh but it's what you asked oh i didn't understand that because again it's not their skill to imagine new possible different possible environments hmm? so instead of asking to make an hypothesis about what would they do in another situation let's try to understand how they behave in similar situations today and then try we try to make the leap to okay what can be next this is just need finding then we have a proposition and we will test the proposition with them later so we check we actually if our leap is out if our new information is useful for them and again don't ask them to do computations in their mind how often did do you do this action how many times uh, you did you do that in the last uh, week uh, how many people do you contact every day i don't know i just throw in a number which is usually over optimistic okay if i'm asking something for it i often do you exercise in the gym every day or twice a day hmm? uh, and so let's not do, let's not rely on their expectation and their answers they're not good at computation and they are uh, all these questions are always biased uh, it's a good thing i will re re refer more it's a bad thing if i refer less when do you park uh, outside the lines never uh, so in some cases some of these answers can be obtained uh, uh, mechanically if there is an application you know, let me see your no maybe not let me see your timeline but uh, uh, you can extract some information from from the user behavior of course if maybe this is it applies of course if you are maybe already have an application and you're working on the next version so a good way of understanding what the users do how they spend their time is analyzing the log of the application and say okay oh this is a function that is really used very much let's try to understand it better hmm? or not use enough and also binary questions are not very good yes or no questions uh, because they or they tell you yes uh, and you don't know why hmm? so always ask why and they will tell you yes or no mm, but don't uh, don't give them the chance of giving a, sh a sharp reply and then uh, running, aw running away okay okay so this is for interviews then some of this uh, some of the um, information that we see in surveys uh, will also apply to interviews especially about the the, the the case the more structured questions but so these are just the, some guidelines okay as we said in the next lab uh, so next week uh, you'll work on that so we'll try to give you a some sort of template to work uh, um, in order to structure your own questions hmm. there is no right set of questions because it depends actually on the users on the domain so the level of complexity of the questions the level of broadness or specificity depends a lot on, on the domain so um, we cannot give uh, very specific rules surveys on the other hand are mainly a tool for conducting a, let's say a light form of interviews online or at distance where you don't need uh, an interviewer or a competent interviewer to conduct the interview so usually survey we are accustomed to web online questionnaires line survey survey monkey google forms uh, every now and then we get an email please spend five minutes in completing this form and so on so it's a very cheap way uh, to reach uh, a large number of users with no chance of uh, really uh, discussing discussion so you have only some quantitative data usually if you reach a big number of person you do, or you, you never ask them to write long explanations or motivations because first uh, you don't you will never be able to read all of them or to analyze all of them why only selecting a number from one to five is something that can be whose analysis can be automated hmm? and uh, um, 
yes and people will abandon your survey if you ask them to work too much mm, usually there are surveys that uh, after the first screen or second screen you have a, a 40 percent drop in people so every new page you lose 40 percent of the people so try to be up to the point immediately and uh, but okay we, we are it's a, they're a familiar tool so pe everybody knows them uh, and it's very easy the big advantage is that they have a wide reach and the results can be easily analyzed with any statistical methods we'll spend some time talking about uh, the analysis so what kind of analysis makes sense because a lot of people uh, just do surveys and then report some data which is totally nonsense okay because they do some computation some averages some charts uh, from that from the logical or mathematical or statistical point of view are trash okay uh, they have no mathematical uh, meaning but they are nice because the colors are and um, so if you do if you know what you are doing you can do extract information analyze information from from also a big number of users um, and uh, the, the the biggest mistake or the biggest uh, say suggestion i can give you for when you design a, a survey is first what do i want as a result ask yourself what do i want as a result give me one page of how the results of your survey should look like so i want uh, this number this number this opinion this chart uh, and this histogram because this is what i need uh, to answer to my question start from the end and then ask yourself what kind of questions should i insert to get that, that information should be very focused you n you must know what you need to know what you want to ask you must decide in what form you would like to see the reply not the individual reply the aggregate responses and only after that designing the question because otherwise the very it's too easy to generate hundreds of different questions i can ask you this and that and that with no specific order and the people will get lost uh, no, they should be focused okay and uh, so uh, uh, an easy tool is that start defining the end pages the, your statistics page of the survey and then only after decide the minimum number of questions that are really needed for that do you really need to ask you that because if i will need i will answer the question otherwise it's just we are we are losing time we both and i'm risking of having a, a lower restitution rate if i'm making too many questions hmm? of course uh, you have a wide base of respondents so okay you are happy but uh, the analysis will never be too deep uh, it's impossible to ask follow-up questions <coughs> there are some cases maybe you receive some surveys in which the last question is if you want to be potentially contacted uh, for future follow-up uh, leave your email here okay i i never leave that uh, unless they say and we will pay you 5 10 50 euros for that uh, but uh, for your time but uh, it's it's uh, uh, even when maybe sometime i left a, re a reference uh, i probably never got contacted back because maybe they have uh, 10,000 replies and they have only the time and budget to contact i don't know 10 people and then those 10 people who signed their uh, their email address so they are statistically not very representative they could be the most committed users which is, uh, are always a small population over the potential market for my application so it's really not the good instrument okay you don't need to contact 10,000 people to understand the main point uh, of a usability of an applic of the application you just maybe with five or ten people you have all the information you need so there's a diminishing return from one people to two you will learn more from two to three to three to five uh, five to ten after 10 probably the, the 11 person the 12 person will not give you some so significantly different responses 
than the previous time. So it's not useful to increase the number of people just to have a it's better to have maybe a, a smaller group and repeat the group after a while one the once the process so if you have the budget and the time to contact 100 persons make them in group of five and and try to structure your process in order to have 20 moments of testing 20 times 5 is 100 so it's in your budget but it's better to have 20 meetings of five people than one meeting with 100 because you can follow the, the, the process, not just everything. I, I don't spend all my money at the beginning. Hmm? Uh, try to avoid uh, biased data questions or questions that rely on user memory or sensitive issues, uh, so because they will never reply plainly. They will always reply what is, you know, the, all the political issues, all the political polls, uh, suffer for this people tell one thing and then they vote for something else hmm? because they don't feel they should tell you the truth why should they hmm? if it's something that is not important for them or maybe can be useful for them they they tend to be more truthful but if you are trying to pop them into the some sensitive points uh, you will get uh, wrong answers and uh, <coughs> About the target, po target population, okay, it's easy to reach, I don't know, all the students uh, in your university, in your class. Are they representative from a statistical point of view of your user population? The ratio male to female, the age groups, uh, the ethnic groups, uh, of the people that uh, you find easy to reach uh, are the same as the people that... Uh, your application is intended to serve okay so it's not important that if it's easy to reach a lot of people if these people are not uh, distributed in the same way as the final users to which the application is uh, referred hmm? so again it's better maybe to focus a bit more but to give give the, uh, the they call this stratification so I have the maybe three percent of people in the in the range the, in the age uh, um 10 to 15 years for example which this three percent should match uh, the percentage in the real target population in a in a survey the first thing you need to write is the commitment so the first time you say okay this survey is composed of uh, 15 questions and it should take 10 minutes be honest so that people can decide whether to start or not or to start in, a, in another moment maybe when they have more time okay people are giving you their time for free hmm? and uh, the survey should have uh, one or more sections and in every section you can have a group of questions okay so try to group not one big sheet of with 50 questions but one page with three or four questions and then the next page other three or four or five questions and so on so that users can also follow what kind of uh, information you want how you group them they can also understand better what you are trying to ask them don't put many textual explanations they will not read them so if you have a big uh, blurb of text and then a question do you agree <laughs> on uh, they will it's okay they, they can they get just click randomly Mm, they will never read it um, and usually it's useful for you to have some background information about the users so the age the gender whether they're working or not uh, and so on the profession if you need uh, first of all ask yourself if you really need that mm, a lot of information that they ask is, is not really needed just for completeness why should I be the one that gives you information for your completeness so limited fields to a minimum and this section should be the last one after I already replied to all the other sections if I see as a first question what is your age or what is your uh, revenue what is your profession I will close the survey immediately 
I don't want to see what's next. If the most important questions for, for, for you are these ones, I don't care to respond. <coughs> After I already spent five minutes or ten minutes of my time in filling other questions that maybe are interesting for me, then I can spend five seconds more giving uh, my some some of my non-sensitive personal information because I already invested so much uh, while well, investing a bit more is not an issue for me so I'm more prepared to say okay I will finish it this is the last question I will finish it so that all the other questions for which I gave a, an honest answer will be recorded okay um, why do you need that? Well, you need that maybe for user segmentation to understand the statistics of the respondents, hmm? but really try to keep them to a minimum. These are some examples of background information that you should ask. Don't ask all of this, uh, huh? only those are that are really relevant. Income, education, do, do you need it? Depends. Huh? The experience with computers can be interesting because you are asking them to use some technology. So are they used to it? Not which kind of technology? Jobs, uh, personality. Of course, it depends. If you are doing something about uh, uh, making parties, it's important to understand maybe if you are more extrovert, uh, you go out, if you feel lonely or whatever. Hmm? So maybe. <coughs> and uh, if you are thinking about uh, uh, an improvement of an, of an existing application the last two ones uh, could be also uh, useful so uh, why or what what are the obstacles uh, or the reason why a given service is not used i know you are not using very much why huh? or uh, uh, do you know that this application already has this feature and this feature so many times we get a question saying okay but i didn't know that I could do this in this program or in this website hmm? and then but it's only for the case where you already have a previous uh, uh, experience so uh, closed-ended questions are qu questions where the user can only give one choice among the possible choices that you already prepare for them so you are the one that are defining the space of the answers open-ended questions you usually try to solicit, solicit mm, motivations and descriptions uh, as I said at the beginning they are not sur big uh, say surveys are not uh, the, mm, the best tool for this kind of questions okay. unless you have a really need to have a solid me methodology for analyzing the responses so you have all these responses you have to analyze them to extract information yourself uh, classify them understand them filter them but it's where, it, where information lies um, give you a personal uh, uh, experience example for the questionnaires that we have at the end of the courses no? the cpd questions okay you have all the ticks all the numbers and one open question at the end no? when you fill the question at the end of the course so i can understand if the course went well or bad from the numbers they will give me a score it's an average and uh, of this course maybe some areas the lectures the lab uh, the classroom or whatever it went uh, good or bad but i don't know why the only reason that the only place when i can try to understand why something did not go so well is in your comments okay so the professor is boring the slides are late uh, nothing uh, we don't understand the process the, the exam rules were never told us uh, until the end so there are many reasons we cannot infer the reasons from the numbers so that is very precious this is a simple case because there may be direct comments to the person that is already organizing already given the course so we can interpret them we don't need uh, a complex methodology but if we are if we are doing a, a larger study we must also try to extract information from a wider number of people we we don't know 
Hmm? So interpreting this, this response is not easy. It's not so easy. If you know the population, it's easier. If you don't know the population because it's, uh, it's wide, uh, well, uh, it takes time to analyze them, group them, trying to distill some real information. That's, there will be a lot of spam also, meaningful sentences. Some which is totally unrelated because people write in a field something that we're thinking instead of maybe chatting to the friends that are <coughs> writing it there. So, and everything happens. Hmm? Okay, um, so try to limit this at the mimu minimum. Maybe one one and often ended question is is acceptable. More than one is difficult hmm? to to analyze. If you need really more, make a smaller group and, and make direct interviews in general. Okay, about closed ended questions, they are really nice no? because you put a lot of questions with all the ticks. Uh, Select one of these, uh, one to five, uh, what is your preference? And they give you 20, 40 different questions. So, do we have any, just a question for you, any un uh, knowledge about the scales of measurements? Did you ever hear about nominal scale, ordinal scale, ratio scale, absolute scale? Did there anybody tell you in some course before? Yes, oh, yes, only three people or? I will try just to be quick. Okay. If if it's uh, something that you already know, I will skip it. Just uh, no. Okay. You were sleeping or so. Uh, the idea is numbers are not numbers. Not all numbers are equal. Are equally numbers. Some number is more number than another. What do I mean? I could ask you. If we we. we we work with computers, so everything is a number. I can ask you, what is your gender? Male, female. Let's make it simple. Zero or one. Zero or one are numbers, but when they represent a gender, they should not be treated with a number. One is more than zero nobody can contest that but we between male and female which is more which is better which is before and after it's the concept is not valid if i have ones and zeros i can make the average and so the average will be 0 0.75 what does it mean that the average person is uh, 75 percent male and 25 female no okay so there are just as an extreme example but uh, there are some or most questions that we map to numerical values for which uh, we should really refrain from using these numerical values as numbers they are they are only representative values for something else for some category so the Numbers which are farthest from, from being numbers are uh, the so-called nominal scale of information. So where we have nominal, names, labels. What is your gender? What city were you born? What is your profession? What uh, degree are you enrolled? What's your favorite room in your house? You have a list of potential answers. You can list them, and the person will select one of them. But uh, all of these are usually mutually dis disjoint classes with no value attached, with no order attached. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so, what can I do once I have the replies, the ones and zeros, or the one to five, or whatever? I can only count them. I can say there are 25% of people that replied category one. Maybe they were from Torino and uh, 25 are from Piemonte and the other 50 are from outside the region. If the question was, where do you come from? No, no more. So giving an, the absolute count or the relative frequency, which is the count divided by the total. Or I can compute the mode of the distribution 
the mod is the class with the maximum frequency okay say that in this classroom the mod is male because there are more than male than female usually the mode of a distribution is a very uh, poor way of describing the data hmm? but you cannot do much much more with this kind of questions so it depends on the question right on the nature of the data the second scale which is more dangerous because where most of the mistakes happen is the ordinal scale an ordinal scale is a set of labels where there is a defined a logical defined order between the categories so the typical preference uh, scales how do, do we agree with this statement no not at all slightly a bit much really really much okay uh, how many stars do you give to a, to a product when you're reviewing a product you are putting thumbs up or thumb down to the movie that you already you just watched it on netflix thumbs up and down is a all uh, it's a binary yes or no one or zero but here really here up is better than down so the difference with with, with gender is that we have two values but in the second case there is a defined order this is better than that so the labels are ordered it means that a movie that was ranked uh, with three stars is better than a movie that was ranked with two stars which is better than a movie which was ranked with one star that's obvious but was the movie with three stars better than the movies with those two stars of the same amount of betterness than the movie from two stars compared to the one with one star no who said that stars categories are not equally distant there's no notion of distance which is the distance between up and down between one star and two stars the gap from two and three stars or three and four stars and from four to five stars are different they are different in absolute and they are different for different people imagine the course at, the, uh, at your high school the effort from if you have a six okay in your score going to a seven okay i study a bit more from a seven to an eight from eight to nine how much you need to double the effort not just saying from seven, for the effort from going from a six to a seven and the, ex the effort from going from eight from eight to nine as a score are <laughs> totally different so n the distance between the different text the different ticks in your scale are not meaningful but uh, we measure them as numbers one star three stars three is a number that is not should not be used as a number we should only understand that three is better than two and never try to make the difference three minus two so there is no you can do comparisons but you cannot do arithmetics on these numbers when they come from ordinal scales even if they look like numbers the university scores i give you 28 30. what is the difference between 28 and 29 i don't know we try to be as objective as possible but really we don't know what is the difference because it's not in the question we are trying to give an ordering from the worst to the best according to a given evaluation criteria the consequence of this is that you cannot do arithmetics so you cannot compute an average saying that the average scoring of this movie is 3.5 stars is easy to compute but it's totally bullshit oh sorry for the word totally nonsense 
because you are making an average you are adding number of stars uh, which we just co were convinced that they are not numbers they should not be treated as numbers okay you say well you're subtracting not adding but it's the same it's arithmetics okay so every time you compute uh, an average ranking of a product on the internet every time they you compute your average in the score at the Polytechnico it's a fake it's a maybe convenient method for dealing with a lot of numbers but from a statistical point of view it doesn't really make sense when you have a grading system like a b c d e f like in the uh, uk and us systems it's easier to see because you cannot make an average between a and c what does it make okay so it's obvious that you cannot make an average oh it's the same here instead of a b c we call them 18 uh, 24 28 30 but they are the same they are categories levels layers not numbers hmm? so can can't you do any statistic with those no no you can but not average you can order them okay i can put all the person from the one that likes uh, me worse to the one that likes me best there will be groups of the one that really hate me the one that more well, can tolerate me but they try to run away and the one that are neutral and the other they like me and the other they would marry me okay there are groups that can be ordered one star two star three star four stars I can count the groups okay this I could also count in nominal case in ordinal case I can count the group from left to right from low to high and I can ask myself uh, okay if I count them from left to right where is midpoint when when do I reach the half of the population is the half of the population on one star so that group is really big is the half of the population on the four star This is the median which is the the group in which the population is split in two half which has mm, better judgment and the half which has lower judgments it's a bit more meaningful than the mode mm -hmm. the two may not be equal they may be also very far from each other the mod is much more influenced by the how do you divide the groups hmm? and uh, the median is a bit more robust <coughs> or if i'm counting people we can count not just half but four quarters so when i get to the 55 uh, 25 percent 50 percent 75 100 percent of the people so which are the categories in which i uh, i found the first quartile the second quartile 50 percent is the same of the median the third quartile 75 percent and the fourth quartile okay everybody and uh, you, you can do further dividing counting people dividing in hundreds the 27th percentile is the person the group to which belongs the person that is a 27 percent of people on, on its left and uh, 73 percent of people on the on its right so that can be done giving medians giving quartiles different percentiles giving ranks ranks is how um, is uh, the absolute values of this how many people is on your left uh, they are not easy to interpret these measures for example you know if you have a fitness tracker or something like that it will tell you okay tonight you slept uh, better or you went to sleep uh, earlier than 27 percent of the people eh? I, I need to really to sit down to understand what it means okay it's, uh, it's good or bad <laughs> i don't know it's a, uh, it's a rank but but it's a rank so you you are there telling you where your measurement is compared to the lineup of the people you cannot really do much better with this measurement so this is the big big stake number one doing the average or the median 
uh, over a set of ordinal values. The, the major sin number one of statistics. We do that all the time. At least we should be aware of that. So even at the beginning, I said, okay, the scores of, the, of your CPD questionnaire, I get the, uh, the average at the end. I know that the average is not really statistically meaningful. It's something that can be useful, of course, as an indication. But uh, it's much more interesting to understand how many people replied three or four compared to how many people replied one or two. So where is the median? Hmm? Not just the average. The difference between one and two, the difference between three or four are very subjective. So using them as hard numbers, Oh, they told me that mathematically two is the double of one, twice as much. Really, the difference from one and two is twice as strong as the difference between two and three. Hmm. Between two and three, there's an increment of 50%. Between one and two, there's an increment of 100% uh, numerically. And if you do the computation, the arithmetics, you take into account these numbers. But what are these numbers or these, math these arithmetic properties representative of what the user was thinking when filling the... No, they are just a scale. So okay, it's more here or more there. If you have a scale from 0 to 10, it's even worse. Because people really are not able to distinguish between 6 and 7. Or 3 and 4. There's no way you could have a consistent criteria in your mind uh, to decide whether this criteria is three or four maybe zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I mentioned five categories probably so in my mind probably could make up five different levels no more than those hmm. then you can go to re real numbers okay numbers that are numbers usually they are what I will comment the middle one before uh, they call the ratio scales. It's an unfortunate name, ratio. It has nothing to do with divisions. They are numerical values. So f before they, they were labels, they were textual values that, for convenience, we merge to numbers. <coughs> In this case, they are numbers. Of course, uh, when I'm measuring something, I always have a unit of measure, which is arbitrary. How tall are you? In centimeters or in meters? or in light years or in millimeters okay that's easy what's the speed of the system the response time milliseconds or microseconds all these measurements are okay they are hard numbers we need of course to specify the unit of measure we can change from one measurement to another by changing the unit of measure but if we are consistent with the use of measure, these are real numbers, so we can do all the kinds of statistics. We can sum them, we can multiply them, you can divide them, you can do then the average, you can do the geometric average, the variance, or whatever you want. Because they are real, really real numbers. Hmm? Um, so, for example, what is your age? It's a number measured in years or months or whatever or decades because maybe they are, you have ranges so from 0 to 10 from 10 to 20 so you don't have the num the number of years you have the number of decades but that is is a number that can be used as a number really um the common feature to all these uh, ratio scale uh, uh, measurements uh, have the, is that they all agree on the zero zero is zero no matter the unit of measure so you can measure them as you want but if one tells you zero then you know that everybody else in the world will also tell you zero if you take if you say one you don't know because maybe for for one meter is a hundred for people who measure in centimeters or some strange number for people who work uh, in inches there are cases for which even zero, even the zero value, the origin of the axis is not fixed, but it's arbitrary. Time. 
what day is it since the beginning of the month the week the year so to say that today is the 9th of october yes it is i'm saying that i'm counting the days unit of measure days and i'm specifying the starting point beginning of october i need two information two pieces of information for describing a date how i'm counting and since since when i'm counting another bad example but historically true of a measurement that relies on so-called interval scales scale are temperatures think about kelvin temperatures the engineering ones celsius temperatures fahrenheit temperatures the zero is placed in different points zero celsius is winter zero kelvin is dead and uh, so they don't agree on zero so in this case you can also do the means because if you do some average then the zero will cancel out if you do difference the zero will cancel out so you don't it, it, you don't care where the zero uh, what is the value of the offset no there's a constant offset that will cancel out when you do all these computations so you can do also the the means but you cannot uh, do uh, ratios you can never say today the temperature is the double of yesterday's it has no meaning if yesterday we had 10 degrees and today we had 20 degrees okay 20 is a double of 10 but is the temperature of today twice as much as the temperature of yesterday well i don't know what meaning to give to this statement but if i were to measure the same temperatures for the same days in fahrenheit instead of celsius the numbers will not be twice as much so it will not even be a robust sentence there's no ratio that can be defined uh, on a temperature scale only intervals the, okay the the um, today is warmer than yesterday by the same amount that yesterday was warmer than, than the day before this is conserved whatever scale you use the distance the interval not the ratio for having meaningful ratios you need to fix the zero easily and then there's, there's a special case of a ratio scale where the unit of measure is missing counting objects cardinality how many people are in this room we count people so what's the unit me of measure it's <laughs> people there's no unit of measure i cannot count in kilograms or in whatever hmm? the number of items and so on so in that case also it's a real number you can do all the statistics that you want with these uh, absolute values more than that uh, you don't have to care about the user unit of measures and usually they are integral values okay and not uh, fractionary values so this is just a very short uh, compressed version of the measurement theory just practically uh, when we ask a question we are creating a question that lies in one of these five levels we must be careful when we analyze the results of the question to apply only the statistics that are meaningful for that kind of question otherwise we have data that can be very easily manipulated the stars zero, one to five or zero to four if i encode them in, in internally in a different way or with one uh, with powers one ten hundred thousand and you do the uh, the medical ever um, yeah the medical sum the mat uh, arithmetical average and you change the numbers because they are arbitrary numbers you will change the result so you can move the result as you want hmm? and so when you are trying to trick somebody else it's okay but try not to trick yourself okay okay one specific case which is very much used in human computer interaction of uh, ordinal scales 
ordinal i cannot take the average otherwise they will cut my hand off are the so-called likert stays this case likert is the name of a person okay but it's easy to remember because like is the kind of question that we want to ask how much do we like something so there's a lot of theory usually likert question so uh, we are asked for the level of agreement uh, about the statement the professor comes to lecture in time how do much how much do you agree not at all not not very much yes yes at all or totally the level of agreement uh, uh, beware that the extreme values the zero and the top the minimum value the maximum value are very seldom selected so if you find them selected there's a big warning somewhere and it depends on the level there are some some people that argue for a four level response scale some people prefer five levels but from, from the cognitive point of view psychological point of view is not very different four or five levels but the difference is that in the five level you have the middle one and so people will tend to go to the middle one when they don't know what to reply they don't want to think they don't have an opinion they will select the middle value if you want people to to say something to take a position to take a stance okay yes but do, it, do you like it or not uh, in the middle no yes or not so you just remove the middle so a four level scale is actually a five level scale from which you remove the middle a value you don't give the possibility of saying well oh, whatever okay the middle one is the whatever scale uh, level so you we, we understand more that really it doesn't make sense to make an average when people think differently of the different values so there's a lot of uh, theory and papers just to try to optimize uh, the, this kind of question but usually if we are also consistent with the formulation so if all of them are formulated in the form do you agree with it's easier because they are all the same questions do you agree or do you prefer there are different questions so let's not mix them hmm? also in the formulation okay um, also when composing the questions try to have simple questions simple to read and simple to answer don't make questions that contain actually two inform two different informations that are mixed uh, and to try maybe ask one more question but each of them should be simple to understand simple to understand because if the person doesn't understand the question at once there's a usability questions also of course about questioners they will reply something that is not useful for you it will be wrong the answer will be wrong because they didn't understand the question sorry it's not their fault because you wrote a question that was difficult to understand <laughs> also avoiding negative words in the question because the white people that don't know what yes and uh, uh, no mean anymore is it true that this uh, functionality is not available so not available yes means that it is available no not not so uh, you know uh, you are asking people to think uh, which is a bad thing and uh, especially then you are you will not be able uh, to decode the answer <coughs> again oh this is common also for interviews okay try not to have to push the people to reply what you want them to reply because then it will be your information not their information okay so these are the three three and a half main tools that we use in it finding observations diaries which are form of observation interviews and questionnaires and surveys huh, that are very close to each other the, uh, they change in the way they are delivered and the kind of depth versus to, uh, breadth of uh, of uh, experimentation so that, that we will this will, will be the tools to, uh, for the next uh, w uh, week's work uh, in the labs okay thank you see you tomorrow in the lab